Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Welcome to the early morning Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Thank you so much for your association, Maharaj. So we are at Canto 5, Chapter 11, Verse 14, whenever you're ready. Hari Bol. I just received the, uh, a message from Shamagori. It's verse 15. Uh, yes, Maharaj, because 13 and 14 are together. Yeah, 15, right? Yes. Yes, Maharaj, yes. Okay. Yes. 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 sorry about that. Om Ajnana Timid Adasya Janandana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvaste Sasunyavadi Pastyatya Dvitatarine Panchakalpa Thruvishya Kripa Sindhu Veva Japaditanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Rasivasa Vigor Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is 5.11.15 This is centered around part <laughs> Okay Nayan Vade Tum Narendra Duyamayam Varado Dayena, the Mukta Sango is Chitasat Sapatno, Vedat Matat Bam Brahmatita Tadvat. Hmm. My dear King Rahugana, as long as the conditioned soul accepts the material body, and is not freed from the contamination of material enjoyment. And as long as he does not conquer his six enemies and come to the platform of self-realization by awakening, awakening his spiritual knowledge, he has to wander among different places and different species of life in this material world. Srila Prabhupada's purport. When one's mind is absorbed in material conception, he thinks he belongs to a particular nation, family, country, or creed. <coughs> These are called upadis, designations, and one has to become free from them. Sarvapadi, Vinir Muktam. As long as one is not freed, he has to continue conditional life in material existence. The human form of life is meant for cleansing away these misconceptions. If this is not done, one has to repeat the cycle of birth and death and thus suffer all material conditions. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So the living entity or the pure spirit soul is not meant to take birth in this material world. We belong to another atmosphere. We belong in the spiritual world. And that is our actual home. That's why you often find we say back home, back to Godhead, back to that place, which is our original dwelling place, or actually our only dwelling place. This material adventure is a sojourn due to our, our desires to experience something outside of our spiritual realm. It comes by way of envy. It comes by way of just miss and by curiosity, thinking there's something in this material world that I can experience, I can enjoy. So the Shastras are trying to teach us that this material world is not our home and our material relationships are all based 
on a false premise, that is the body. We have a body, but we are not the body. We have a car, we use the car, but we are simply the driver or the owner of the car. Same way we are the, we are the energy force that gives life to the body. And uh, the body has a purpose, but we are not the body, it's an instrument. And so the body means different designations. The list is quite lengthy. Uh, the initial designation is that I belong to a particular gender. <laughs> so I'm seen as a male or a female comes pretty easy, either one of the two. And then I belong to a particular country and I belong to a particular, uh, the country has a certain nationality, a certain culture. I adopt that simply by my association with that country. And then I, I develop relationships with family, father, mother, sisters, brothers, cousins, relatives, and people in general, neighbors, friends, people that we work for, people who work for us. So we get all of these, what is called designations. The word here is upadi. So the verse says that one should be sarvopadi, vinir muktam. So we are living in a false reality. <laughs> uh, but we, in order, because we don't know the real reality, we accept the false reality is real. <laughs> and therefore, we put a lot of time emphasis and energy in developing this reality, which is just an illusion, because it's based on something that is ephemeral and uh, temporary. Material existence is one of the energies of the Lord. It's, a, it's an energy that constricts the, the, the living entity's ability to exist. We are locked up in a material body, and then we are locked up in the material world. And then we are locked up by the designations which are connected to that material body and world. And these are the chains that keep us locked up. We develop attachments for whatever we are, whatever we do, and whoever we relate to in society, either immediate or extended relationships. But all these things are temporary and um, we have to play the game. It's a game. The game is to somehow or other one has to go through all of this to somehow get rid of it. <laughs> now, the, the living entity has a natural tendency to develop an attachment for something that it sees that it's related to or something that will give them pleasure. And that's, that is our bondage in the material world. So this part part is very strong. The, the teachings of King Rahugana go right to the point. They don't, they don't mince or patronize anyone's material feelings. They tell you just like it is. But this material world is simply a place that we have to learn our lesson. And then once we learn our lesson, we get out of the material world and return to a spiritual world where life has all of the things that the material world has, but in perfection and without cessation, including unlimited knowledge and continuous happiness. Uh, that is our, well, you might say that is our, our destination. But as long as the material world is, as it says, as long as one mind is absorbed in material conceptions, 
then one thinks mistakenly they belong to a particular family, country, creed, or nation. Now, sometimes when you hear that, a person becomes a little bit uh, concerned. Well, I have my family, I have my friends, I have my activities. Now I'm supposed to hate them. I'm supposed to somehow or other um, develop some kind of distaste for their association. No, the idea is to Krishnaize everything because this, this material energy is also the foundation for elevation to the spiritual energy. So connecting the material with the devotional process transforms that spiritual energy into uh, transforms that material energy into the spiritual energy. That's why Prabhupada would say that Krishna cannot produce anything material. Everything he produces spiritual, but the energies work in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, the material energy is eternal, but the forms are temporary. And try to understand that point. The basic principles that make up the material world, earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, intelligence, and the sense of self based on the body, known as a hunkara, they are all uh, the basic principles or the basic elements of material existence. They reformulate themselves in different combinations to make up the forms of this world. So whatever you see in this world is a combination of these eight elements. There's nothing more. And the external energy or the gross form of it is based on these five, earth, water, fire, air, and sky in some cases. So the, these basic elements are not destroyable. They're transformable, but they're not destroyable. It's like if you put a pot of water in a, on a, on, in a place and you leave it there uncovered for a long time, say for a month or so, you'll find that there the water will be gone. Nothing will happen to the water, but it'll automatically evaporate and it'll turn into a gaseous state. If you want to speed that same process up, you put it on the fire and then you boil it and then it, it gradually reduces. I mean, then it quickly reduces. That's an example of how material elements are transformable in combination with other material elements. We see the brick of a house when we understand what is it made out of. We call it a brick, but actually all it is is earth, water together and then put together and then put into an oven where there is fire. And then you have a brick, three, three particular elements. So this material energy is Krishna's energy and it's also divy. But we see it in relationship to the, to the body and therefore it acts in a different way. When we use it for Krishna's service, then we transform our consciousness at the same time to spiritual and that element, which is in essence spiritual becomes, regains its spiritual nature again, like that. So this is a little, uh, understanding of how everything ultimately is spiritual, but our consciousness is wrong. And that's the problem. We develop the wrong kind of consciousness. And what is that consciousness? Janasamoham yamaham mameti. This is I, and this is mine. So that is the problem that is called, that is called moha. Moha means illusion. What is that? These two categories of existence, I, I am, and then you put another word after that. 
I am a man, I'm a woman, I'm old, I'm learned, I'm a member of this group. You know, I am, and you can find many names or, or categories of designations that follow that particular case, I am. But then you got, then the, then the, the other category is mine. Mine, this is my house, this is my husband, this is my wife, these are my children, this is my car, this is my money, this is my you know, property, the whole idea of mine. So these are the two basic locking forces that are mentioned here. These are called the upadis, the designations. They fall into two categories, I and mine. As long as one is not free from these conceptions, we have to replace the I principle with who we really are. I am eternal servant of Krishna. That is my identi identity. Jiva Sarupai Krishna Nichadas. So the I principle doesn't go away. It becomes realized in relationship to its essence. And that is we are eternal servants of Krishna. We are by nature of the same nature of Krishna. Krishna is pure spiritual. We are also pure spiritual. Then the mind principle, what is mine? Well, everything in this material world doesn't belong to me because when I come, it's there or somehow I work and bring it about. And I think because I worked for it, it's mine. But then after some time, either I go or it goes. So we can't keep anything in this world. No, nothing is, is eternal. Nothing is lasting in this world. So these are the two principles that are being mentioned here. These are, these are the upadis or designations like that. And Prabhupada gets right to the point unless one gets rid of these misconceptions by replacing it with the proper understanding, then one has to continue in the cycle of birth and death. Mitche maya davase, kacho beshe, kacho hu, bubu vai, jiv krishna das, e vishwash, kolida adukanai, that the living entity in Cardinal Guna Sangha Show Sarasad Jodi Jan Misu. We go from one particular material situation to another depend, based on our activities and our desires. As they accumulate life after life, we traverse the universes. Sometimes we take birth as demi gods and higher planets. Sometimes we take birth on the human form of life in this material realm. Or sometimes we can even go down to the lower realms, lower species of life. So depending on our karmic credits, we get a particular body. And these karmic credits are not changeable they are fixed. So whatever activities and devotion, whatever activities we perform, we are pushing the material energy in a certain direction. And based on that push, we get a reciprocation according to one or more, or more of the three modes of material nature. So when we stop wasting time trying to improve our material existence, and we simply accept whatever material existence we are in and use it for the service of the Lord. And then we can purify both ourselves and material existence. Otherwise, we have to continue life after life and finally learn the lesson one time. So sometimes a devotee will think, well, maybe I'll get a better birth in my next life. This birth is not so good. I'm not so intelligent. I don't really have a good body for, you know, in devotional service. Maybe I need a better situation. But that can never be guaranteed. She'll probably say, you're in the best situation right now. 
make the best use of it and go back home, back to Godhead. Don't try to improve your material situation by getting another life and thinking it'll be easier to become Krishna conscious there. Not necessarily, that's not guaranteed. And one is actually gambling because one doesn't know what body they'll get and where that body will be placed. Mm -hmm. That's not under our control, simply under the controls of the material energy. Okay. One minute, I'm getting a lot of background noise here, so I'm going to just do something and I'll be right back. So we should read the scriptures to, to teach us who we are, what is our relationship with Krishna and how to develop that relationship and then act accordingly. There's no limitation. Anyone can be Krishna consciousness from any perspective. Kidatu hunam palinda pukasat, sambira abaya, keshadiya, who is it? What is that verse? Palinda Pukasa Ambir Sambak Kasyare Vaisadaya Yene J Paspayasvaya Vishvante Pravishnu Prabhavave Namaha. I didn't exactly quote the verse correctly, but that verse is from the second canto, ninth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, which says, even people who are born in a very obscure and lower grace can somehow or other, uh, if they go, yeah, if you want to find that verse, the um, second, ninth, ninth chapter, ninth chapter. And uh, go down to at least verse number 22, I think it is. Mm. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Keep going. Is there more verses? Second canto, ninth chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, Amata, he has said it's fourth chapter, 18th verse. Okay, fourth chapter. Uh, fourth chapter of the second canto. Okay, I go to the yeah. second canto, fourth chapter. <laughs> Yeah, Kirata Hunandra, Palinda Pukasa, Ambira Sumba, Yavana Kasyadaya, Yene Chapapa Upasrayasraya, Shadanti Prabhavishnave Namaha. And then it mentions uh, the translation Kirata Hunam Andra Palinda Pukasa Ambira Sumba Yama, remember the and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord due to his being the supreme power power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances unto him. But his verse is quoted to say even these lower races, these are races that are below the Divan Ashram system. Even they can uh, attain to perfection if they if they engage in service to the devotees of the Lord. So the point is made that 
no one is disqualified to go back home, back to Godhead. Uh, devotees will sometimes make a material estimation of their situation and say, well, I'm not so qualified. I'm surrounded by so many material responsibilities. But then we, again, we have the examples of so many great souls who were absorbed and immersed in materialistic life and then they somehow or other uh, freed themselves from that, took to serious devotional service, and then went back home, back to Godhead. So there's no uh, restriction. The soul's nature, and that, that means every soul, every soul's nature is to love and serve Krishna and our homes in the spiritual world. So how long do we want to stay in this material world? That's up to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we think it's too hard to get out of the material world. I'm too attached to my friends and family members. I have so many plans to become happy here. Then life after life, we have to continue taking birth until we finally got, come to the point of realizing uh, that we have nothing to do with this material world. You know, when we, when we take birth and we come into every, everyone say, oh, life is so nice. And they give you so many formulas for being happy in the material world. If you just do this, if you just go here, if you just have this, if you can just achieve this, then you will be happy. But these are all these are all the, uh, the voices of the illusion, keeping us more and more uh, confused and connected to this ever-changing and always miserable material energy. So we want to get out. Krishna is lovable. He's the most lovable person. Uh, there's no one that can compare to Krishna. So the incentive for going back home, back to Godhead, is getting absorbed in Krishna. Krishna is the most beautiful, he's the most powerful, he's the most famous, he's the most wealthy, he's the most strong, he's the most renounced, and he's surrounded by so many wonderful, wonderful associates who serve him in different ways. And Prabhupada said, go back to the spiritual world. There are beautiful men there, there are beautiful women there, not like this material world. And everything is there in perfection. So, um, and this material world is risky. Uh, even if you are, just like we have the example of King Nirga, which is in the Bhagavatam. Yeah, he was very pious, very religious, always giving in charity, had a lot of wealth. But somehow he performed his pious activities in the wrong way. And he made a mistake and he offended someone because of that mistake. And it cost him to have to take birth as a lizard in order to pay for that mistake. So material energy is like that. Material energy is very mercilessness. It doesn't give you any mercy at all. You play with the material energy, you get what you play with. <laughs> But Krishna is very merciful and he can, he, can, he can pull the material energy away from us and bring us into the spiritual energy. So the whole idea is get attached to Krishna. <laughs> Make your attachment for Krishna. Become Krishna addicted, Krishna absorbed. Make your life centered around Krishna. And Krishna is there. He's not far away from us. He's, he's as close as we want him to be. If we want him to be far away, and that's the way we'll experience him. But if we want him to be close, he'll come close. We have to make that effort to bring him closer. And that is devotional service. And that starts with Srinvata, Swakata, Krishna, Purnya, Shravana, Kirtanaha, Ridyanto sto abhidani rid vidunoti surhit satam. 
uh, through the process of hearing about Krishna, the heart becomes cleansed and one, one mind becomes attracted to the lotus feet of the Lord. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's some discussion. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a wonderful class. Yeah, while you were talking, uh, I was also wondering, how is it that we are constantly told that this is the place for us and everywhere our education system itself is geared towards being successful in this material world, learning about the material element, learning about this material world. We are never taught spiritual education. Uh, so it's like all our life that is what that th that's the condition and even the people around us none of them all of them feel like uh, this is the place for where we belong we have to enjoy we have to see more things so it's it, it feels like it's just a very small group of us who are thinking different that's all yeah this is the material world Sometimes it's called the a fool's paradise. That's another term for the material world. A paradise where everyone is foolish. <laughs> There's no paradise, but everyone is trying to make it better. You can't, you can't make this material world better. You can't change it because we are not the controllers. We are controlled by the material energy. It's like a person wants to do something, and as soon as they connect with that activity, they get controlled by the activity. So the desire pushes us to want something, or to be something, or to gain something. And then simply by that desire, we're forced into a certain way of thinking and acting. And then we are trapped by that, that desire and the activities that come with it. Yeah, so if we stop desiring material activities and start putting our energy and, and emphasis on devotional activities, then we push back the effects of the material energy and we awaken the spiritual energy and that brings us closer and closer to Krishna. It's a process. You have to understand getting out of the material energy is not so easy because we are conditioned. We are called Nitya Bhada. We have been in the material energy for so many lifetimes. Sometimes it says Koti, millions of lifetimes. So, you know, that conditioning is there. So it's not so easy to even recognize that who we are different from the material body, what to speak of get engaging in those activities. Yeah, so we're trapped. And that's why hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in the association of devotees. Turn to uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, 25th chapter, 25th verse. Here's where devotional service really begins on this 32525 mm -hmm. satam prasangam mama bhavanti ridkarna rasayana kata tajosanad asva pavarga vartmani srada ratir batir anukramishyati Translate any association of pure devotees, discussions of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and heart. And here we go. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and therefore he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begins. Prabhupada's first statement, the process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service 
is described here. The first point is association in persons who are Krishna conscious. And then the activities that come in that association, hearing about the glories of the Lord and chanting the glories of the Lord. These are the activities of the great souls. In great souls, everyone's a great soul. It just means that one has to perform the activities of a great soul. And then one will be recognized as a great soul. Carefully study this purport and then you'll find some uh, inclinations or indications also of how to proceed in devotional service. Thank you so much for your wonderful answer, Maharaj. I have a quick question. I, I sometimes wonder, like, you know, there are multiple universes, right? So there are multiverses. Are there also multiple of us, of one identities? Are there multiples of that? What, uh, what are I'm you? not sure I understand your question. Can you repeat it? Yes, Maharaj. I mean, it's again, probably it's the conditioning from the education that we pick up and we see the other things. So I, I wonder what Krishna consciousness has to say about, um, so I, you were talking about identity today. So hence the question came into my mind. Is the, is the soul, the individual soul's part by itself just that, that, or is there, or is there multiple of us as well? Well, there are many souls, and each soul is an individual soul. It's like on the same level, there are many living beings, many humans, and each human being is different from the other human being. So the souls are all spiritual. They each have their individual identities, but they're all connected to Krishna. So we are one, but we are different from, from uh, any other individual soul. Right. Hi, Bal Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, just like there's so many humans, but there are, each human being is different. So many souls, but each soul is different. But our natures are the same. That's right. Our nature is to, to serve Krishna and develop love for Krishna. That's our spiritual nature. Our material nature is try to enjoy the senses. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you. Devotees, do we have any further questions? You may ask, you may unmute, you may raise your hand. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for a wonderful class. I just love the way that you explain things. I really appreciated the way that you said um, our material relationships are based on our bodily conception of life. Um, it kind of, it really reframed things for me and, and I really appreciate that. Um, and also I was thinking when you, when you mentioned that, a, you know, that devotees shouldn't wait for a better situation in the next lifetime, you know, to advance in our Krishna consciousness. And I was even thinking about, you know, in the current lifetime, sometimes I can't speak for others, but sometimes I, you know, kind of say, oh, well, if I had this, this way, I could, you know, practice a little better or, you know, things like that. So thank you for that statement as well. And um, I just have one question in regard to, um, you know, when you were speaking at the beginning of class about the gunas. Um, and this kind of kind of came to my mind. Is it, it, do we have to reach the mode of sattva in order to go back to Godhead or can we go from rajas? No, Krishna also says that in, he tells Arjuna, be situated in the mode of goodness. 
Mm -hmm. One of goodness is the foundation where you can perform devotional service. Okay. Rajas is about um, Rajas is about um, personal material gain, mm. whether it's lofty or ordinary. It's still about me. Goodness has the qualities that can be used in the service of the Lord. Mm -hmm. There's only one quality that has any value in Rajas, and that is the, the quality of creativity. Mm -hmm. But all the other qualities are all self-centered and selfish and motivated by personal gain. Mm -hmm. And of course, ignorance is completely off because it's all about, you know, wrong activities that are detrimental to oneself, even materially, and of course, others also. Mm -hmm. So, but mode of goodness is a stepping stone. It's not the goal. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so do we have to, <laughs> so my next question is, you know, how do we have to be purely suffix to, how does that, how does that well, work? Part, just engage in devotional service accordingly and then understand how to serve in a way that is beneficial for the object you're serving. Mm. So the, some of the qualities that allow service to be accepted is that uh, humility mm -hmm. and a desire to please the object of who you're serving mm -hmm. and uh, absorption in the activity. These are all part of the of some of the qualities that make up uh, that, that service, which is acceptable. Mm -hmm. We can do service from any of the three modes, but they're not acceptable. Okay. okay. So you have to, you know, cultivate. Tolerance allows us to continue. Determination also allows us to continue when things go different, different, difficult. When uh, we experience happiness or distress, uh, if we're not affected by that, then that allows us to continue nicely in our devotional service. The mode of passion is we do something to get some kind of result. And according to the result we get, we are, we are happy or unhappy. The devotional service is not about trying to get a particular result. It's about trying to please Krishna. And if we're trying to please Krishna, or we're trying to please Krishna's devotees, which means to give them Krishna consciousness, that is the motivation behind it. And the results will come accordingly, not by our own efforts, not only by our own efforts. You know, come by Krishna's sanction. Thank you so much. Yeah, so we have to practice. Read the qualities of the modes of goodness. It's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter. And read the qualities of, it's also mentioned in the seventh canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And then in the first three verses in the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, these are also qualities in the modes of goodness also. And then of course, chapter 13, verses eight through 12, 20 mm -hmm. items of knowledge. So the scriptures are full of activities and qualities, characteristics that are conducive and essential, many of them. Some are conducive and many, many of them are essential in order to execute devotional service. You practice those things. <laughs> it's a matter of practice. I'm trying. <laughs> yes. Yeah, if you're trying, that is, that is practically success. Because devotional service requires mercy, and mercy is, comes by way of your efforts. 
if you if you keep trying your best and you try to keep developing those moves that are conducive to service then you'll you'll receive the mercy you need but if you go independent of that then you curtail that mercy you still get some but you can't recognize because you so we have to learn the science of how to execute devotional service. That comes from the spiritual master. That comes from descriptions, studying the life of the great souls, reading the Bhagavatam. We have the lives of so many great souls. How do they act? What did they do? What was their mentality when they were serving? We learn from their example. These books are meant to teach us and not just simply nice decorations on the wall so we can say, well, I have Prabhupada's books and each of the different volumes have a different color and it makes my, my room look very nice. <laughs> it's, about, it's, about, it's about reading them and understanding. <laughs> mm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for your answer. It was very inspiring. I appreciate it so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. There was a devotee, Sai Vivek, uh, raising his hand. Would you like to pose your question to Maharaj? Thank you very much. We have darshan of Krishna and Radha. Like first, uh, our like view goes towards Krishna's face. We have to also like look towards his face. Is it the other understanding Krishna's uh, sweetness? We have to focus on the greatness of. Krishna. I, I think he should present it. He should present the question in the chat because the, the, the there's too much static. I can't hear any any of his words. Is it is it audible now, Prabh Maharaj? Now it is. Yeah. Try again. Yeah. Actually, before having like when we whenever we have darshan, we first focus on the face of Krishna. Before oh, understanding no, the no 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 you start with the feet. Okay, okay, yes. You start with your feet and then you go you bring your your glance up to the lotus face of the Lord and then down again to the feet and then you pay your obeisances. You don't start with the face, you start with the feet. That is that is the proper way to approach the Lord. But, but our mind always tends in focusing on the sweetness of Krishna. It's it you'll very... Get, you'll get there, you, but you have to start with the feet. Yeah, we may very much tend to forget the greatness of Krishna. We all, our mind is accustomed in uh, well, it's, getting... You, you can't, you can't uh, simply go to the lotus face of the Lord. You have to approach him. Because each of the parts of the transcendental body of the Lord has a connection to our mood of devotional service. So the lotus feet of the Lord means humility. You can't approach the Lord without humility. So first we look at the lotus feet of the Lord. Okay, Maharaj. Thank, thank you very much. Yeah. That's Darshan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we have Mother Sri Devi online. Yes. Mother Sri, you can go ahead. Thank you, thank you very much, my dear Nina. Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Um, in the course of this really very eye-opening lecture, uh, I heard you say that, you know, we have to 
not develop a version to our attack i mean to the people we are attached to or develop a dislike for them but try to krishnaize our relationships is that what i heard would you please explain how not to develop aversion or hatred or something saying oh my god now all these people are there in my life taking me away from krishna but to see them as parts and parcels of krishna and i have to serve them something like that engage them in devotional service yeah you can't have a a relationship on the material platform you can but it's not going to it's not going to bring you closer to krishna it takes you farther away so you have to you have to purify your atmosphere by engaging people in devotional service you engage your daughter you engage your friends your relatives somehow or other connect them with krishna and then the relationships develop on the spiritual platform mm. and then once established nicely in devotional service we continue our relationship eternally that means even in the spiritual world we continue to have spiritual relationships you don't know that question come on you've been preaching for years <laughs> what kind of um I'm, I'm, i'm a little uh, maybe a little getting a little confused actually because when you say spiritualize your relationships <clears throat> my idea is see them as parts and parcels of krishna and try to serve them as best as possible what they do with that is up to them because they may not take to devotional service they may not accept that you're trying to engage them in devotional service no well, you try and if you fail you go somewhere else where people are more accept receptive okay all right thank you guru mara Yeah, if somebody wants to bring you down, you want to you want to just you say, well, because we have a relationship, you can bring me down if you want to. No, no, it's not. You know, family members are the hardest people to really convert to Krishna consciousness. because okay, they yes. yeah because they see you in a certain way and they have a relationship with you in that way when you change when you evolve into spiritual they're not they unless they come along they're going to continue to have that same my relationship with you or at least see you in the same way that's that's why it says a preacher is 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 the is least appreciated in his hometown <laughs> that's yeah that's in the shastras krishna chaitanya so many revelations thank you guru maharaj for bringing me out <laughs> make the whole world your family and then you won't have any problems <laughs> absolutely absolutely yes guru see, maharaj if you see everyone as your family member then the relationships will always be there right and really who is in family everyone is connected because they are all parts and parcels of krishna just as i am so yeah really the whole world is my family this nuclear family is just a you know just coming together based on on mutual exploitation that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> Krish, Chaitanya. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. I am so happy to be here. So happy. <laughs> now you can take. Now you can extend your relationship with the broader family of of Krishna's parts and parcels. Yes, and it's wonderful. <laughs> that, 
That's the real family. This material family will fade, but the spiritual family will last. Right, right. Thank you. Hare Krishna. My humble obeisance you. Hare Krishna, do we have any last minute questions? Hare There's Krishna one. Maharaj. Then one, in, one in the chat. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Danvir Pranams. Uh, I had a question. Uh, okay. Uh, Maharaj, you were mentioning uh, that uh, uh, the uh, material elements always exist but uh, you know, only the form changes so um i yeah i was trying to understand so when it is uh, um you know in the pradhana state is it on manifest or i mean the elements are eternal they're created by krishna but they change they change their forms the forms that the elements may are make up are changing but you can't destroy it that's why even the scientists say matter can never be created or destroyed that's a scientific process you can't you can only change the form it is but you can't change you can't destroy the basic atomic structure of the elements that's eternal So at the time of uh, dissolution, um, so uh, where do these elements go, Maharaj? They, uh, along, with the, uh, along with the living entities, they also merge back into the Pradhan, which is the aggregate of all the material elements, and then they wait. They're there in the dormant stage. And then the next creation comes after so many billions and billions of years. And then Krishna activates those elements again. Brahma appears and then starts to reformulate those elements into the different forms that make up the 8,400,000 species of life. Mm -hmm. Everything in this material world, including your body, is a combination of those eight elements. Mm -hmm. Look around you and see anything you see. It's coming from Krishna, but it's been formulated in a certain way to have a certain, you know, if you take a piece of wood, you know, where does the, say a table, you have a table. And so a table comes from wood, a wood comes from tree, a tree comes from earth. Who created the earth? Krishna. So everything is connected to Krishna in its essential form. Like that. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah, that's everything. Including our bodies, too. Hare Krishna, there are more questions in the chat. Okay, so we're just about to our one hour mark. Uh, Sh um, Shamagori is still there? Is she still there? No? Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, do you have some time? There are a couple questions in the chat. Yes, we can, okay. we can take... Would you like to uh, go ahead? Yeah, I... go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. 
um prabhu ji is not answering okay the question hari krishna maharaj please accept my humble obeisances i am in the process of cultivating spiritual knowledge theoretical knowledge and performing devotional service to the best of my capacity but i feel that my devotional activities are still superficial could you please throw some light on this maharaj thank you just keep going <laughs> that's all <laughs> you just keep staying with the process and then and all that superficialness will start to dissipate you be, your beginning it becomes theoretical you can we we do that with material life too when we get involved with something we can be very superficial about it or we can be absorbed in it so same thing just give it a chance and develop it cultivate it work with it it will change if you apply there's two things you have to apply the right mood and the right activity when you learn the right mood and the right activity it's, it's no longer self no more super, super, superficial the right mood is i want to please the lord i want to i want to become purified in krishna consciousness and the right activity is the is the direction of the spiritual master that's it Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah. There was one. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I think we can end the call here if there are no more questions. Nina Mataji, are you there? Uh, yes. yes, yes, Mataji, I'm here. Um, so I believe there are no further questions from anybody. So we can end the call here. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Many, many, many pranams at your lotus feet. Thank you so much for your association, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Everyone stay happy. I'm chanting Hare Krishna. Yes. And, stay, and stay healthy by taking care of basic hygiene. Um, Sai Vivek Prabhu, do you have any last minute question for Maharaj? Uh, yes, Mataji, like, uh, uh, Maharaj, are you, can, do you have time, Maharaj? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a living entity, a Jiva, from where uh, does he get this rebellious mentality? Like, why do we come like to a spiritual world? Because like we, as a spirit soul, we are like pure and we are we have qualities as uh, good as Krishna, right? But uh, from where does that rebellious mentality sprout? And how well, can we... This, we are part and parcel of Krishna. And Krishna is Swarat. But he's fully Swarat. We are partially Swarat. Swarat means independent. We have our independence. Otherwise, without independence, there's no question of bhakti because bhakti is voluntarily. So we can misuse our independence and decide not to serve Krishna. And that's why we come to the material world. So uh, the choice is up to us and we're influenced in our choosing by our association. So if we want to get back to Krishna, we have to take good association or proper association if we want to stay here then we take we continue with our material association and we, we will remain in the rebellious mood association is the uh, is the transforming agent of our consciousness mm -hmm. thank you thank you Maharaj thank you very much Hari Hare Krishna Okay, Hare Krishna, everybody. Lalita, Dina Bandhu, I get to see you at the end of every class. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you.
I'm so glad I can get to see you anyway. And <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. And I hope everything is well. Yes. Health is good. Good. Okay, Tiffany, thank you. Lalita Tungi. Lalita Lalita Tungi. She's she ran away from Charlotte and she's somewhere in the northern hemisphere now. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, I'm just protected by the Association of Devotees here, thanks to uh, the house built by Srila Prabhupada, which is there. You went to a different room, eh? You're in a different room of the same house, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Okay. It's so wonderful to hear from you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always so nice to uh, know that you are still you know, who you are. <laughs> you haven't you. been, you haven't been corrupted by the Toronto atmosphere. <laughs> Every day it's a fresh challenge, uh, but uh, Devotees Association saved me, Maharaj. Bhakti Sangha especially, and it's so wonderful when you come and give us so many thoughts to think about. So that way we are we are thinking what you heard, what we heard from you and processing that will take a long time and that keeps the other thoughts away it's an interesting understanding <laughs> keep the keep the mind busy with philosophical problems <laughs> okay all right, uh, so today is Ekadasi. I hope everyone is chanting 64 rounds. Yes. <laughs> I know. Almost. <laughs> Ekadasi means more chanting. I am not fasting for Ekadasi. So as long as we are, um, as long as we're chanting, the mind is busy. So there's the answer. Ah. Thank you for telling us. Thank you. Um, is it a courtesy tomorrow for you or today? Today. Today, yeah. yeah. Uh oh, Lalita doesn't look so happy. What happened? <laughs> did, you, did, you forget? did you forget it's a courtesy? We didn't know it was. We didn't uh, change the calendar. That's but I didn't I didn't break it. I only had Burphy. <laughs> good, good, good. I knew there was some benefit. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I will go on and uh, have another class coming up soon. So thank you very much. We'll see everyone soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mara. Thank you. Yeah.